Hey everybody, good day. My name is Kaneki, and I come in the name of the Lord. So this video is, um, it's a little bit more intense. Um, I had written something as I was guided by the Holy Spirit. After I read it, I had to kind of stop myself. And for about three days now, I've just been counseled in what was just written. And so just know that I come in the name of the Lord. The Israelites wandered the deserts, forgetting your name, calling you Yeshua when Joshua was from before the first temple. They paid no mind to the words you gave as a goodbye and remained aberrant, claiming punishment and abandonment from a disdainful God. The Gentiles call themselves Christians after the name of the Christ Spirit, and they do not say your proper name, Christ Jesus our Lord. Abba Adonai remains my guardian, guiding me in all knowledge with tenderness and grace, as smooth as natural thinking, knowledge and intellect rendered onto paper. The nation paid no mind to the death of your one and only son, or to the fact that you so loved, yet can be still loving. Those who feared your name feared it to death behind a monitor, already killing the spirit of fear and imitating sincerity. The nation is crying out in pity, your name is still alive on their lips. Do they not see? Do they not know? Can they not tell? The cloud has passed you. It rains no more. When you so love the world, why would you deny me a peaceful death? Why are, why are your sins forgiven? Is it the sacrifice of a son, or does a father's love go as shallow as the world? Why do you call natural disasters a tribulation? Why have you contested with voices in your head and confused my words with your voice? A humble and gentle, full of love, a hopeful king to die, and yet you mock me in saying, I showed you burning souls in hell? I came here to save the world, not condemn it. I spilled blood of my one and only, just to trust. Do you think aware? Do you know what folly? He this stone falls on will smash. He that lands on this stone will be shattered. Interruptions in the silence when the rude have words with no meaning but in fool's victories. What can there be if I haven't come for you to wait for the day of realization? I was there to pay my dues. My son was there to stop all death and life swallowed death when death took a man's life. In whose image what was he was and he is and is. To what great earthquake my heart shattered into a billion pieces. To what gash tear did the temple veil expose my carcass? But no notice was taken. Faith turned to foolishness. Too much faith and discernment sulked away in silence. Insanity to sense their God was a loving God as their God was. There is a remnant, 7,000 chosen by grace. So, I just want to impart that there is a reason why you need to be justified through Christ Jesus our Lord at the heart. There is a reason why there is a, not another name that can be justified there that your t tongue professes. Our forefathers, the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, they said that the old law will become obsolete and then discarded and fade away with the new covenant that came about. And that was 5,000 years ago. They weren't going against the old religion. They weren't going against God at all. They were for God. When Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he died and he was r risen again, that was, that was the testament to what had really happened. And you can see it. If it was not true, then Christianity would not have become so huge and encompassed the world. There was a fire that was driving them, an all-consuming fire. But a portion of that for the first time 
since the beginning of creation? Was it allowed to be with you? When the Pentecost came, a huge wind was said to have swept through the room and tongues of fire appeared to dance on all of their heads as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were talking in tongues for the first time, different languages, understanding, communication, an ability to speak without knowing because the all-knowing was speaking through you in such a graceful way. God is known as the all-consuming fire. And in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void. There was a darkness over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God was in Jesus Christ. That's what you call the Christ. The Spirit that was from the beginning who was then the Word made flesh in the body of Jesus of Nazareth, as had always been the plan by God Almighty, for God Almighty. There was waters that was in heaven, and God made a firmament to separate the waters, and he sent one of the waters down here on earth, gathered it together, so that land and sea could be made. But while he was doing that, he separated the other waters of heaven above the firmament. And the Spirit of God kept hovering over those waters. When Jesus Christ came down, that is why he said he could give you the living water. The only re reason and way that Jesus Christ could have been raised from the dead and have sealed that testimony for this new covenant is because God sacrificed his own son so that God could sacrifice himself. The reason that you need to have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the guarantee in is because God is dead. The God of the Old Testament is dead. He keeps his promises. He doesn't break his oaths. He doesn't break his promises. He's truth. But ultimately, God is love. And he's also a jealous God. Jesus Christ knew this when Pontius Pilate was speaking to him and Christ as Jesus Christ said, You would have no power or authority to do this to me unless it was given to you from above. So the one who has handed me over is greater in sinning. He is guilty of the greater sin. So I ask you to think now, and the truth will reveal this to you. Who is the one who handed him over? Was it Judas Iscariot? Or was it God? How can everyone have a little bit of love? How can God pour out His Spirit on everybody? How could everyone already have that potential for the rest of salvation? Love shattered into a million pieces. Whoever lands on the rock will be shattered as was God's plan. And when Jesus died, God came down, shattered unto a billion pieces, so that Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the King of kings, Lord of lords, could be resurrected again. That's how the Holy Spirit came about. And those were those little tongues of fire. And that is the potential of today. Know that I'm in the truth. God is love. And it's Jesus Christ. Now, because the Old Testament, it has become obsolete. That was the law of righteousness. 
The New Testament is the faith of righteousness. So that you could have a second nature into civilities and virtues. Because those two things are going to be the new common sense when the new nature of righteousness comes in to prepare the sons of God and the sons of the first fruits and the saved and the believers for the new heaven and the new earth that is coming about. Because the radiance and glory of God, the light of God, that was Christ, the Spirit hovering over the waters, the living waters. God himself is an all-consuming fire that is in the King of Kings. He, he is in the heart of Jesus Christ, who is in the heart of those who have been justified. And it needs to be like that, because Jesus Christ is the tent that covers that, or else you will be burned, you will be consumed, you will be turned into righteous. And what righteous is, is a firmament. You cannot be moved. You are strong, unmoving, unwavering. It's pride with no transgression. The feet. The solid. Righteousness is the flexible, the graceful, the bride. The glory of man is God. The glory of Christ is God at head. The glory of man is Christ at head. The glory of woman is man at head. It all accords. So that's what I'm saying. You can't have Yeshua. If you have, and you cannot change that, then know that that is all in God's plan. You have been made hard for that purpose. Like I just said about righteous, you have you are now righteous, pridefully righteous. And that would be to the people of the Israel. Because your forefathers are the ones who cursed you with recursive sin and cursed that generation and generation and generation with the blood of the righteous Lamb of God who was completely innocent. But that's why God did that. Because he took the lives of many people who were innocent. But he never breaks his covenants or his oaths or his promises. And he's in truth. That was for the covenant of Noah. That if a man takes another man's life and spills his blood by a man will his life be taken and God had taken a bunch of the Hebrews the baby boys when Christ Jesus was being born into the earth into the world in Bethlehem and so that's why God paid his dues right there that's why the last Blessing is the anointed through the line of David from the root of Jesse, which is now, because the anointed are going to be the 12 judges. They're going to be the anointed elect. Then the elect are going to come about, and those are going to be the 7,000 that is by grace. And then the 144,000 are going to be managed by the elect. And the ones anointed by grace I mean, the elect that is anointed from David, they're going to be the 12 disciples that have been reinstated now. And I have points about that to justify whether or not that is you. But you will know as well as I, because the final pieces are coming together towards the end as the mystery of God is revealed to those who have correctly imbued the Holy Spirit and or have been made prepared with this all to the glory of God nobody could have ever done this no man can boast no none of us is deserving of such great glory and just so much gentle grace none of us and so in my humility I do the work of the Father and I share this with the world 
to know that it has nothing to do with prejudice or bias or discrimination. It is that way for a reason. So that all can accord in truth and love, justified correctly on a solid foundation of humility to become who we were originally made to become which is everlasting lives in the presence of God and His glory here on earth and sustained. So I come in the name of the Lord and I hope that this video uh, helps you in your walk and opens your eye a little bit long, longer and bigger so that you know that it's okay to love bigger. It's okay to be bolder in your grace. It's okay to be in mercy when you know you could be right and be judgmental. It's okay to practice wholesome thinking that will generate a sense of grace, of empathy, so that your Holy Spirit can mature and grow into what it's always supposed to become, is a Holy Spirit that holds no discrimination, something beautiful and graceful, but with the power to just completely eradicate you with truth if need be, and protected by the Almighty that sins, there's no law that you need in order to live your life in civilities. The laws of civilities have been written in your mind and your hearts and justified correctly into blooming, into that mature walk of your life that have produced the fruits of the Spirit, that you are capable of loving and giving love, that showing respect and being respected, that you have the grace and capacity to be patient and understanding, and people can be patient and understanding back with you. That's how you get the fruits, because you have to produce the fruits, and it's a second nature. It stays there. And after that, when you have produced all of them in accord, because you have been practicing and denying the world and knowing that it's okay, you have gone past your comfortabilities and released the world by being and proved your faith. You became your faithfulness was right past that comfortability of your home, doing things outside of the box according to the grace and the will and the law and the and protected in that righteousness and knowing that you are loved and that's why you can and yeah, you might fall, but he will never let you stumble completely to not be able to get up, yeah? He'll lift you up. That's what it means. And if you have done that correctly, then you have blossomed to the next level, and that's called sincerity. Everything that you do will be by the truth, out of love, through sincerity. And that means even punishment. If you are made to be a judge, that's because the spirit of discernment is with you, and you can regulate what people are saying there's a little bit of wisdom that is your confidant to that because the truth is very simple usually. It doesn't need so much writing and this and that. That is for the purpose of man because we don't know how to trust each other. And in the end, there's so much man-made knowledge getting mixed in with the truth of the matter that it ends up landing on your own righteousness anyway, which counts for nothing needs to be to the righteousness of God. And that's faith. That's hope. That's trust. Perseverance. Love needs to be sincere. Love one another that your joy may be full. So, I come in the name of the Lord and I hope that this helps to re-justify you. This is not the end of the age. There is still hope. Call out to the Lord. He's your refuge, your high tower. Don't harden your heart if you hear his voice calling to you. Right now, he landed, the God of the Old Testament landed on that stone. That's why the stone got rolled away. And if you don't justify yourself according to that, you're going to find that when you land, that stone has not been rolled away for you. And that light, the light has not penetrated the darkness. It won't be able to see you and you won't be able to know whether or not. So, I encourage you 
as you can see, it is the end of the times. We are in that day and age. Keep this to your forefront, yeah? Many, many will enter, but few will find it. And then think about what I just said and think about Christianity and all these religions that are so huge in the world, like billions and billions of people already, right? Narrow is the gate. Small is the gate. Narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. And few find it. Broad is the gate. And wide is the road that leads to destruction. And many will enter it. Now think about what is encompassing the world in this degree. Many, many people believe in something. And they, many, many people follow each other down that same road. If many, many people are doing that, that is a pretty broad road, pretty wide gate. Start thinking like how the Lord would start thinking. Start trying to exceed the expectation. Know that He is God. He's faithful. He'll keep His covenant of love to a thousand generations for those who love Him and keep His commands. And we're at the end of the age. This is generation 999. But there's still hope. So I encourage you, pray to the Holy Spirit. Don't harden your hearts if He's calling you. And re, be transformed with the renewing of your mind. Go back and read the parables again with that humility in you so that you can then use it as the tool it was meant for us to be used by so you could see where your level of maturity in your Holy Spirit is and how then you can share more of the mystery of the Lord your God so that you can grow and become better and bigger and bolder and more graceful and gracious. So live with a little bit of fear of the Lord. Yeah? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And that is a beautiful thing because wisdom will keep you. Take care.